Hello and welcome to Jamie's Wee Podcast. This episode is brought to you by, well, it's brought to you by no one right now, but how good would your product or service sound being plugged at the very beginning of this podcast? If you're interested, then send me an email or a wee DM and we can discuss the details and your uncle Jamie will sort you out. I am here recording this podcast episode at Genesis Creative Studios in Changu, Bali. Um, that is a sentence I never thought I'd say, but there you go. Um, and by the way, this studio is actually owned by a Scottish guy. What are the chances? And his dad, now this is a story, his dad has an OBE for holding the largest Highland Games in Southeast Asia. I mean... What are the chances of that? I never thought that Highland Games existed out with Scotland, but not only have I found a studio, the only studio in Changu, I've also found the only studio in Changu whose, who, whose dad owns the biggest Highland Games in Southeast Asia. What are the chances? But there you go. Um, so, welcome to the, the podcast. This is episode one, all right? And I'm going to level with you. I've got myself a little whiskey here. I was going to buy some nice stuff, uh, but I was... Push for time, so I had to stop into the shop and buy the Bali stuff. It's not quite an actual whiskey. Um, it's less than three years old, so it can't be classed as an, an actual whiskey. Um, but, but it'll do the job. It'll do the job. Now, there's a reason why I've got the whiskey. Um, first of all, it's a gimmick. You've got to live up to your stereotypes. Um, I'm really trying hard for a whiskey sponsor. A whiskey sponsor is the end goal of this podcast, let me tell you that. Uh, and also, it's to calm the nerves. This is episode one. I, I am a wee bit nervous. I'm excited. I'm overwhelmed. You know what it feels like? Um, I used to play professional football. I've mentioned that once or twice. Um, and all my friends listening back home will probably dispute the fact that I played professional, professional football. But I did. I played professional football up until I was 18. Um, and I, the, the feeling that I've got is like pre-match nerves. Like I'm excited I'm nervous, I'm apprehensive, um, but aye, but here we are. The only thing is I didn't get to drink whiskey before a football match. Um, so this is nice. It's nice to be able to calm the nerves with a little whiskey. Um, and also, uh, it's just me in a room by myself talking to a microphone. Uh, it doesn't get much weirder or surreal than this. So uh, hopefully the whiskey can, can help pull me through. So if you don't understand me, unlike Instagram, um, I'm sure this is probably where you've found me. If not, then hello to the, the new followers. Uh, if you're from YouTube or Spotify or wherever you come from. But if you're from Instagram, you're used to the subtitles. And unfortunately, I can't put subtitles on a podcast. I cannot be bothered doing it for the YouTube channel either. Um, so you're just going to have to grin and bear this one. All right. Um, so yeah, here we are. Sorry, I just had to uh, dart away there. I had my first technical issue. One of the GoPros stopped working. I'm scared to say their name because they've got voice recognition. And if you say their own things, then they're very temperamental. They will turn off. So as I was saying, unlike the Instagram stories, there will be no subtitles. So please just grin and bear it. All right, You just need to get used to the accent. Okay? Um, Ivana says that I do have sympathy English. And I do use sympathy English when I'm around people who I know don't understand me or there's a possibility that they won't understand me. But when I do that, it, it hurts my mouth. I'm not going to lie. It hurts my mouth. I'm using muscles that I've never used before. My mouth, my tongue. It's just, it, then it starts to become numb and I, I start to mix up my words. So I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'll do my best to sound as clear as possible. But... I can't guarantee that you'll understand 100% of this, okay? But I'll, I'll do my best. But thank you all for joining me. If you're, if you're still here, well, if you're here in the first place and you're still here, then thank you very much for joining me on this first episode. Um, tonight, we are going to be discussing how to start a podcast, um, why I decided to start a podcast, and also what I hope to achieve by having a podcast. So there's quite a bit to get through, actually. Um, I didn't think there would be that much when I first set out these um, these bullet points, but there is quite a lot. I've spent the entire day coming up with like a list and a flow. I obviously don't want to script it because I just want it to be as, you know, natural as possible. Unlike the intro video, which was very scripted, and I used that weird Scottish accent and all my words come out 
wrong. Um, well, not wrong, but they, they come out in a, a weird Scottish Edinburgh accent. Um, that's not for me. But yes, so we'll start, we'll start this podcast with how to start a podcast. Now, before... Um, before I done this, before I done the intro video, I did put out a Canva, a slide on the story, asking for people to send in voice notes, to send in questions um, that they might have for my first ever episode. And I was blown away. All right, I was blown away by the response. Honestly, uh, one one person one person responded, and that person was Emily Peelan. Emily, you superstar. You absolute superstar. Thank you so much for sending in this voice note. And it it leads in very well. Now, I'm going to try and play this. I took a screen recording of what Emily had to say in the DMs um, of her voice notes. We'll play it right now and then we'll work work through all the questions that she had because she's she's pretty much nailed it um, when it comes to asking about how to start a podcast. So here we go. Hey Jamie, Emily here. I'm so excited that you're starting your own little podcast Um, and I have a question for your first episode. Basically it's how much time, effort and money did you put in to starting your own podcast? Um, I would be really curious to know um, and also you know do you have to edit the recording a lot or do you just record it all in one go and just upload it um yeah i'd be curious to know thank you well thank you emily um that is quite a magnificent new zealand accent that is a thoroughbred new zealand accent that is pretty much how i expected ivana to sound um but unfortunately ivana's accent has been watered down through our travels to the UK and spending too much time with me. So beautiful accent, Emily. Um, and thank you very much for sending in those questions. So let's get to it. How to start a podcast. Um, first of all, when I had the idea or when I decided to execute on the idea, I didn't want to over-research it. I didn't want to overthink it because ultimately that can put you off. All right? I didn't also... On the flip side of that, I didn't want to rush it either. So that there's a fine balance between, you know, not over-researching, not over-analyzing, because you know what happens, you get into a Google um, or a YouTube rabbit hole, it's so much information online, it can be very overwhelming. Uh, and that's easily done, easily done. So I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that. But at the same time, I didn't want to rush it. I didn't want to do a really shit job. And I didn't want to make the chance to make a really good impact. I've been telling a lot of people about this. I've been creating a little bit of buzz, set myself up for a fall, perhaps. But I believe I could make a good enough podcast, which you're seeing right now, all right? You're seeing right now, without over-researching it. Because I've done a lot of that in the past. If I if I research something, a new topic or subject or thing that I want to do, then in the end, I just put myself off because I think, you know what, fuck this. It's just, it's too hard. It's just too, there's too many things to do. There's too many things I don't know. It's going to cost too much money. I'm going to need to buy new equipment, use software I've never used before and get on channels that I've never utilized. So I didn't want to do that. But at the same time, as I say, I wanted maximum impact. So I rushed into getting this studio set up. All right. Um, Initially, I thought I've got a MacBook. I've got a Rode mic, which ultimately I've never ever used. I bought it with the intention to use with my Sony A7 III camera, but I've never used it because I did have a plan to vlog at some point, but I've never used it. And also I've got the free GarageBand recording software, which is on the MacBook. Um, And ultimately that's all you really need to start a podcast in terms of hardware and software. But I didn't want to just knock out the first episode in like Ivana's mum and dad's kitchen. You know, I wanted it to be something like this, you know. Um, so that that was the that was the that was the initial thought. That was the initial thought process. But it's been an idea for a long, long time. Um, but it got really serious when I made my twenty twenty goals. Um, in terms of the time, the amount of time that it takes, this is going to be something that I'll learn as I go. This is again, this is all very new to me. I don't know how long it takes to edit an actual podcast episode. I have obviously edited the intro video, um, but other than that, I've not done a I've not done a full podcast episode. Obviously, by the time you watch this, 
I've done the episode, but again, I'm, it's going to be a learn as I go type situation. Um, but what I, what I have found when I was making the intro video is the smallest things, the smallest details took the longest time. I swear to God, I filmed the intro on the Friday night. I, I pretty much put the footage together, edited the footage by the time I'd went to my bed on the Friday night. And I thought, yeah, that's brilliant because I, I really wanted to get it out on the Sunday because I'd created all the hype. And on the Saturday, I thought, you know what, I have got all this time to get all this stuff done for all the channels. And by the time I got to making the YouTube thumbnail in the morning, I was still there at night. And this is just a YouTube thumbnail. The thumbnail is the cover picture, um, which you see before you click on the YouTube video. And that took me about 12 hours. And now if you look at that thumbnail picture, there's not a lot in that. There's no 12 hours worth um, of work. So that is, that's that's the kind of things I've got to overcome. That's the things that are really going to be time consuming. Be using channels I've never used before, using software I've never used before, and fucking thumbnails, all right? Things that should take two minutes are taking me 12 hours. In terms of the format, I've had an idea about that for a long time. Um, because I've been thinking about it for so long, I, I know exactly how I wanted it to be in terms of me speaking uh, on my own, me speaking to other people, me speaking to Ivana, and the subjects that I wanted to cover as well. So that's never been an issue in terms of the format. In terms of the effort, it doesn't take a lot of effort. It just takes, it does take a little bit of time. As I say, the thumbnail situation. Um, the startup takes a lot more time and effort as I'm really navigating uncharted territory here. Uh, the startup course, how to make a podcast, plus making sure I've got all the right equipment. It's make sure you don't miss out in the small details because, again, I don't want to compromise in quality at all. So that the effort comes in. It's, it's probably the stress more than the effort um, just to make sure you're doing things right. Again, it's I, I know nothing about podcasts. I know nothing about, you know, video and recording sound and editing and all that kind of stuff. So this is all brand new to me. Even the channels that I'm using are, and I'll be posting this on, they're all new to me. Um, so that's where the effort comes, just learning about all these new things. But I'll take it in my stride. I'll learn as I go. I'll learn by doing. And the biggest effort... And was creating profiles on the new channels. So Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher, SoundCloud on the website and working out, you know, how they all work together. You know, when you incorporate Instagram as well, Facebook, you know, all the social media channels, there's, there's a lot of channels and they all do different things. So it's working out how you can use them all correctly, how you can all use, how can you, how you can use them all together. Um, and, and, not just that, utilizing them in the best way possible so you get maximum output and you get maximum effect and you can create like a following uh, and, and you, can, you can gather some momentum, you know? So that's, that's, that's a big effort is creating the profiles and making, making sure you're utilizing these pro profiles properly. I'm really struggling already with my P's and my T's and my R's. It's something I will get used to. Just bear with me. So yeah, just making sure that the, again, the video is good quality, the sound's good quality. And not only that, with these different channels, again, every channel works differently. It's like when we do the blog, a blog post has to be optimized. If you write the best blog post in the world, it doesn't matter if it's not optimized for keywords and SEO, no one will ever find that blog post. And that's the same when you, you, you use YouTube channels and stuff like that, you know, even, even things such as the file name of a video it's so important when it comes to SEO. All these channels have SEO, search engine optimization. So you need to make sure that you're doing things properly. I don't, I don't want to go through all this effort and get all excited about my new thing, my new toy, my new project, and for no one to see it. So I want to make sure it's got a maximum impact, all right? So I'm learning about YouTube tags. I'm learning about YouTube descriptions um, and everything else. You've got it on iTunes, Spotify, the lot. Every, all your descriptions, all the categories you choose are very important. So that's that's what I'm navigating through in the beginning and in the early stages. And no doubt, I will pick up things as I go along. In terms of money, well, you've got two options, all right? You can choose to spend a ton of money in equipment, software, and the platforms on you can choose to be cost efficient, which of course is the option that I have chosen. The studio for me was a great help to get this thing off the ground. Um, two of my friends have used it. Jonas and Jord, congratulations on your new your new course, Jord. Uh, 
fantastic effort. I've seen that these guys were in here for 50 hours in total. They sent a brand new record for these studios. And, you know, I'd seen footage from here. They'd put it on the stories. I'd seen clips um, that Jonas had showed me. So I knew these studios were about. I knew the the quality that they possess. So I thought, and the price, the price is so cheap, right? Big George, the guy who runs it, God bless him, he charges $10 an hour for this setup. Now, if you could see what's going on round about me, um, and not just in this room, they've got about six or seven studios here, and every one of them are optimized. They've got the best equipment. Um, they've got the best sound equipment, lighting, cameras, you know, everything. Um, it's such a good setup they've got here and for $10. George, if you're listening to this, please don't put the prices up. It's cheap and we love it. So don't 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 hear this and think, I'm going to put the prices up. Keep keep them as they are. Or mates rates. If you do decide to put them up, George, mates rates. So stick stick with the $10 per hour and you'll... I'll be here every week, son. I'll be here every week. Um, and sound is the biggest concern. And again, that's something I really want to get right. So when I'm not here in this studio obviously I am going to continue to travel between here in Perth for this foreseeable future and elsewhere I do want to release a podcast every week if I can so I need to find something in terms of hardware that I can is easy to transport in my bag so that's microphones cameras uh, and also it's cost efficient I don't want to spend a fortune I've just bought the new Sony with the lenses and that thing does not can work uh, when it comes to this so Yes, I don't want to invest too much money, okay? I need to uh, re- get some returns on investment first before we invest in the podcast. So we'll see how we got on with the podcast first. And if it does well, then I'm going to invest in a wee uh, podcast camera. So we'll see, see what happens. Um, so yeah, I want to invest in a proper mic setup for more than just me. I plan to have guests on the show. Uh, so there needs to be at least two microphones. And when it comes to the MacBook, again, Apple like to make things difficult. So I'll need to find a good setup when it comes to the microphones. Um, I've seen a few things online, so again, it's going to be something that I experiment with. Uh, So we'll see what happens with that. And because I wanted a YouTube channel, as I said, I need video. Video is paramount. Uh, I think that can give me a competitive edge. Also, YouTube as a channel we haven't utilised just yet, but my camera, as I say, the Sony a7 III, the best camera on the market, the best all-round camera on the market, as some people say, which is why I bought it. Um, thanks to the EU law, it means that the camera, the Sony a7 III, cannot record for longer than 29 minutes. The reason being is because if it records longer than 29 minutes, then it's classed as a video camera, so then they would charge you more for tax. So. My Sony only records for 29 minutes. And one thing I do not want to worry about when I'm recording these things is the sound or if the cameras are working. And I can tell you right now, that camera keeps going off. It's been a wee pain. So this is is the kind of situation I don't want. Why do you keep turning off? I'm going to turn you back on now, but this keeps happening. All right, so this is what I want to avoid. So... I was going to use my iPhone 11 as backup, but tonight I haven't. I wish I had because, as I say, that GoPro it keeps cutting out. I don't know what's wrong with it. That's the 7 as well. You should be behaving yourself. So I might do that in future, use my iPhone 11, because I don't need fancy transitions. I don't need the best video quality. It's just going to be videos of me, and if I've got guests on, talking talking to the camera, uh, talking, talking to each other. So I don't need a fancy camera setup. So I might invest in a couple of GoPros and use my, my iPhone 11 as a backup. In terms of software, I'm probably going to use GarageBand with the Mac. Um, apparently, that's that's more than adequate to use uh, to use GarageBand. It's a free software. It, it's, it does the job. It records. You know, you can do a bit of tweaking with the, the audio. Um, so I'll, I'll use that. I'll use the GoPro, which I probably have to buy a GoPro. These are the ones that I'm using to film tonight. I borrowed thanks to the people who, who let me borrow them. And I'll use Final Cut. Now, when I bought my new laptop in 2016, I, I souped it up with all the best stuff, like Final Cut, things I, I'm never going to use, but you know what? Throw it in there, mate. Throw it in. 
how much throw it in I'll, I'll use it eventually all right um so i'm finally going to get to use final cut and and in that i actually used it for the intro video and it was very good because i had the two camera angles the audio the, the three of them are separate you just drag and drop click a button and say merge these videos together and it, it does it perfectly well i don't know how it does it but you know that's why i paid the extra money for final cut um so that is what i'm going to use to actually edit the videos um and in terms of editing this, it shouldn't take too long. After I recorded the intro video, um, I went home and I, I managed to put it all together within a few hours. So, and I, and I am rubbish. I am rubbish at using software. And so if I can do it in a few hours, then, you know, it should be fine putting these things together. As I say, I don't need any fancy transitions. So it's all good. It's all good. Now, in terms of getting my audio recording onto Spotify, what channels am I using? I'm using Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, and hopefully Google Play as well. Google Play is the only one I've not got set up just yet, but hopefully I'll get that up and running soon. So to get on Spotify, iTunes, and Stitcher, you've got a couple of options. Now, I did ask a few friends who have got podcasts for their recommendations, and pretty much every one of them, bar one, says that they use a third-party platform and the, the the benefits of using these third-party platforms is that you can there's loads of benefits actually but the main ones are like monetization um the main ones are like you know you, you upload the audio in one place you click a button and it goes to all these separate channels it goes to like itunes spotify all that kind of stuff you, you only need to do things once and there is a lot of benefits to it in terms of how much audio you can record, the storage, all these kind of things. The three ones are Podbean, which are plans from like zero to $99 a month. Then you've got Buzzsprout, who are like zero to $24 per month. And then you've got Libsyn, who are like five to $40 per month. So, and they've all got different benefits, different packages, and they all do different things. Um, But for me... I wanted to do it on my own. You know, I don't I don't like relying on third party platforms. I feel like I've come a long way and I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm big enough and I've been in this game long enough that I should be able to figure this stuff out on my own. So one of my mates who's got a, actually a really good podcast, a really successful podcast back, back in Scotland, he suggested that I use SoundCloud um, to host the podcast. Now, the way it works is your podcast needs to be hosted somewhere. It needs to be hosted on one of these platforms such as SoundCloud, Podbean, Libsyn, Buzzsprout. And what that does is it creates an RSS feed. And what RSS stands for, I don't know. I forgot to research that. But it creates an RSS feed. And when you create an RSS feed, you get like a, a special link. Now what you do with that link is you then push it to Spotify, iTunes, um, Stitcher, all these channels. And what that does is it gathers the information from the host channel. So for example, I will host mine in SoundCloud. So I'll upload the audio to SoundCloud. I've already pasted in um, the RSS feed link to Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher. And that will continually pull the data from SoundCloud. So you do, it is good. You only need to upload the once. It even pulls all the description, the artwork and everything. So you only need to input that the once. Um, and then it does it all for you. So that, that's kind of where I'm at. Now with SoundCloud, you get three hours of free upload time. So if I continue to do these podcasts this length, I may need to upgrade to a paid plan. But I just wanted to get the ball rolling with a, a free plan just to kind of feel, get the feelers out, see how things go. Um, and then if I feel comfortable enough and I do a wee bit more research on the other platforms or even SoundCloud, I'll update to a better plan. Um, so starting off with SoundCloud as the free platform, pushing it to Spotify, iTunes and Stitcher and the video will go on YouTube. In terms of editing, again, I don't need any fancy transitions. As long as the sound and video is fine, it shouldn't take me long to edit at all. Um, as I say, I'm looking to do one podcast per week. Now I'm going to try and... Um, record every Wednesday or Thursday and push out these podcasts every Sunday. Now, if you're listening to this on Sunday, then yes, I managed to get it done. Um, there will be weeks, obviously, where things happen and I might not be able to do it, but I'm going to try and stick to it. 
and doing it every Wednesday or Thursday um, and getting the video, the audio and everything else out every single Sunday. So watch your space, see if I can, I'm holding myself accountable and you can too, you can hold me accountable. Um, so we'll see how we get on. So let's get on to the subject about why I decided to start a podcast. People are like, Jamie, what's with the wee podcast? Oh, that's good, that's good. What's what's that all about? Eh? Oh, I don't really understand why you're doing it. Um, but good for you, good for you. But there's a lot of reasons. And when I explain the reasons, people are like, that's fair enough. You've thought about this and I can see the brain work and I can see them think, how the fuck can I start a podcast as well? Well, I'm ahead of the game. I'm ahead of the game. But one of the first reasons is, and it's a very modest reason and a very most modest answer, people continually tell me how good I am at the stories on Instagram. You know, I'm funny. Uh, my accent, even though they don't understand it, you sound fucking hilarious. Um, but for me, I don't have the time or the skills and I just can't be bothered um, making YouTube videos. I've got a few friends who do it and I know the work that goes into making these YouTube videos, the transitions, the colour grading, all that kind of stuff. It takes hours upon hours upon hours and I am already inundated with stuff to do with the blog and stuff like that. So I didn't want to do that. So I see the podcast as a happy medium. It's basically like a lazy vlog, all right? This is a lazy vlog. Um, the next reason is I really wanted a solo project to take the pressure off Ivana and I. Now, we've been doing... Uh, wandering two for over two years now, which means we've been working together, living together, um, just together on everything. And honestly, it's hard. As a couple, when you do every single thing together, the lines become blurred. We wake up in the morning and the first thing I think is, fuck's sake, Ivana, why haven't you done this? We wandering two. Or we get we go to bed and I'm like, I'm still working. Why are you not working, Ivana? You know, it's just, and I'm sure she thinks the same about me, probably worse. In fact, no, definitely worse, because um, I am a nightmare. So this, you know, this is a good thing to have on my own. I am accountable for this. It's all on me. If I don't do it, it's on me. Um, if I fail, it's on me. It's got nothing to do with Ivana. And it kind of takes my mind off wandering to a wee bit, um, which is a good thing, because as I say, the lines have become very blurred. And now I can actually go, you know what, I'm going to work until two o'clock on the blog, and then I'm going to switch to the podcast. Um, and it gives me something to talk about with Ivana. I've, I'm excited again. Um, so now that's that's a huge reason, actually. Just having a solo project away from Wandering 2 um, to take the pressure off the relationship, the working relationship, and the friendship, everything. Absolutely everything. Um, the next reason is I see this as a blue ocean opportunity. Now, a blue ocean opportunity, I don't know the exact terminology, um, or meaning behind it. I did read it once, but I forget. Um, but it's basically like coming up with an idea which is quite unique within your niche. So, you know, and my sample market is basically a friend group, a friends group. You know, we, we're friends with a lot of Instagrammers, photographers, um, bloggers, all that kind of stuff. So that's my sample market. And none of them, none of them have started on Instagram, then incorporated the blog, then the blogs became the main thing and the Instagram takes the back burner and then they've incorporated a podcast into that. So I think this is very unique. You know, Now, I didn't reinvent the wheel. I'm not claiming that I invented fucking podcasts. All right? Um, but all I'm saying is within our niche, and this is like very unique, and it gives us a, a slight competitive edge. Um, I know podcasts have been around forever, but not in our world, all right? So I see this as a, a wee gap in the market. Now, the next one, one I'm sure you're all familiar with right now, the Instagram algorithm is a pain in the arse. And right now, it's it, Instagram is it's pretty much dead, all right? I don't like to be negative, but Instagram's pretty much dead. Um, in terms of growth and reach and all that kind of stuff, but apart from the select few, you know, it's very hard to grow. And the work that you put in, it's just not worth it anymore. The time and the effort, the work, the stress, and everything else that goes into these things is just not worth it. All right. Um, so we've decided to, to put our things and put our time into projects and energetic projects that we believe, you know, will bear more. We'll just enjoy them more first and foremost. And but they'll bear more reward. So Instagram, thank you for pushing me out of the platform with your terrible techniques. And also even Google search rankings. You know, we've moved into the blogging world, but even Google 
they continually update the algorithm and it, it does make it difficult. They really make it difficult. You've got to work within keywords. You know, you've got to work within a, like If we write a new blog post, it can't just be how we feel and all that kind of stuff. We need to incorporate it around keywords. So it's, it's not a 100% organic piece of text. Um, so you've got the Instagram algorithm, the Google algorithm. And you know what? This is just free reign. Having a podcast, I can say whatever the fuck I want. I can even swear. And I'm sorry, mum, but you taught me how to swear. So, you know, if you're watching, I'm sorry. Please, please don't shout at me or text me. Um, but, you know, being Scottish, swearing is in our language. It's just part of the vocabulary. Most of the time, it is affectionate. Sometimes it can be aggressive, but the majority of the time, it is an affectionate thing. All right. But yeah, I can say whatever I want in a podcast. I can go into much more depth. I can be much more emotive. Um, and I just feel like I can get I can get my feelings across so much easier, so much better through a podcast than I could through Instagram or a blog post. All right. So that's that's a huge reason. Rumor has it that Google will start ranking podcasts on the search engine results page. And what, what I mean by that is if you put in something best restaurants in Changu or whatever, you'll get a, a list of search results. It'll be blog posts and companies and whatever else in there. But what they're starting to do is they're now starting to rank podcasts. So if I, if I was to do a podcast, oh, the best things to do in Changu, and there's no other podcast there, then my podcast could be at the top of that list. And it's just another form of bringing in unique traffic. And you need a competitive edge. So again, any chance of getting a competitive edge I will try and take at this point in the game. Um, so also brings a different type of audience and a different type of traffic. Right now, our website gets traffic from uh, Pinterest. It gets it from Instagram. Sometimes a wee bit of Facebook as well, not too much. The majority it does come from organic traffic from Google. But some of the people who might find our podcast on our website because I, I'll get to this in a minute, but some of the people who will find our podcast on the website might never have come to our website before. Different type of audience, you know. Some people who come and find this podcast might not be interested in the top thing, fucking things to do in somewhere, you know. But they might be interested in, oh, Jamie's wee podcast, what's what's this about? So it brings a different audience. We try to tap into as many audiences as possible. So that is a, that's another big reason, um, all right? Now, by bringing in more traffic you create a better brand awareness. I'm also looking for sponsorship opportunities. So if anyone wants to sponsor this podcast, please get in touch. Um, you could do worse, trust me. Um, and traffic that can ultimately convert any ad revenue. You know, every time someone visits our website, if there's an ad on that page, then we get paid. So the more traffic we can bring in, regardless of the traffic, then the better. So I'm thinking of this as a business opportunity as well, you know. Um, I've also, I've got a lot to say, first and foremost, I've got a lot to say, I've been through a lot, I've lived a lot, um, you know, I've got a lot of experiences and pretty much all topics, physical health, I used to play football, I was a professional footballer, I might mention that once or twice in this podcast, um, business, you know, Ivan and I have started our own business, I also went to, to night school when I was a gas engineer to, to learn about business management worst two years of my life, should never have done it, uh, learned nothing about business, it was just a bit of paper, um, you learn more, this is one thing that's absolutely fundamentally true and believe me on this, you learn more about business by doing than reading or learning, trust me, because the two years at university, at night school, which I had to pay for myself, were a waste of time. Only thing I learned about business school is I didn't need to go to business school to learn about business. Ivana and I have now created our own business, it's doing well, it will continue to do well, and we have got massive aspirations. So, you know, we can talk about business on this thing. Um, travel, of course. Ivan and I have been pretty much traveling here, there, and everywhere for the last two or three years. And even before that, Ivan as well traveled. She traveled from New Zealand through Europe to get to the UK, which is where we met. Um, and, you know, I've been to a few places as well. So we've got, we've not, a few countries between us. So travel, we've got a lot to talk about re regarding that. Relationships, Jesus Christ. Uh, Ivana and I have been through a lot in this last four years. Um, we've been up, down, roundabout, hell and back a few times. 
Um, I've got the battle scars to prove it. But, but even before that, you know, I've been in relationships. I've done some bad things in my time. Um, I've experienced some bad things in my time and I've come a long, long way when it comes to relationships. So again, we've got a lot of, a lot of things to talk about when it comes to that. Obviously blogging, um, we've been doing it now for two and a bit years. We've been doing it for, we've been doing it seriously for the last year. Um, and we're getting good at it, I would say. Um, and it's, it's provided us this opportunity to still continue to travel so we can talk about blogging. We've got a lot to say about blogging. Social media, of course, fucking hate it, but it's a necessity these days and it's done as well. We've met a lot of friends through Instagram especially and we've got, honestly, we have got one of the best communities. People say this and it infuriates me because it's so cliche, but we have got one of the best communities of people that follow us. Like we, we might not post for two, three months at a time and people continue to follow us and engage with us. Um, so no, we, we're, very, we're very happy with what social media has provided us. As much as it tears me apart thinking about it and everything it stands for um, and what some people do behind the scenes to get, get ahead, um, I still love it because it has provided us a lot of opportunities. It's given us a lot of friendships um, and it's provided us, you know, a really strong community of people who are always so willing to offer us advice, be positive, be friendly and everything else. So, nah, we can talk about social media as well, if we must, all right? But most of all, mental health. Um, I have got so much to say regarding mental health. Um, yes, and that is actually one of the biggest reasons I started this podcast. Now, it's time to get a little bit personal, all right? Um, as much as I want this podcast to be uplifting and funny and positive, I'm going to touch on me mental health from time to time and we'll try and keep it positive. We want to be positive. Um, even talking about depression, anxiety, all that kind of stuff, we want to keep it as positive as possible. All right. Now, I'm going to share something with you um, that's very personal. I've only, I've only told this to my best friend, Anne Ivana. Uh, but this, this week... I was speaking to my therapist. No, I've got a therapist. I've been speaking to a therapist for the last year. All right. Um, and this time last year, and I, I was in a very, very dark place. Um, I wouldn't say I was suicidal, but I had suicidal thoughts. There's very different um, things behind that, which we'll discuss in the future. Um, I wasn't suicidal. I had suicidal thoughts. Things weren't going well for Ivana and I um, as a relationship, friendship, um, we were ready to call it quits with one or two. We were running out of money. We we were in the wrong side of thirty. Um, we felt very lost. We didn't know what to do. We felt like we had failed. Everyone around us was a success, um, and I just went to a really dark place. I wasn't looking after myself physically or mentally. I wasn't in good shape in any way, shape, or form. All right. So by chance, one of our friends who we met in Vietnam. Her name is Mary. God bless her. Um, she watched her story, and because I, you know, I'm, I've been very vocal about it from a time previous, um, again, which I'll, I'll discuss in a future episode. But Mary seen the story that I'd put up roughly about a year ago, maybe maybe just over a year ago, talking about like how 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 bad I felt at that point in time. Um, and she got in touch. She sent me a DM. And in the, at this time, Ivana and I were living in London. Ivana had picked up some temporary work. We went back down there to try and earn some money because as I say, we were running out of money. Um, so Mary said, I have got a friend um, from back home. She's American. Uh, she's now living in London and she's a therapist and she is kick-ass. She's a kick-ass person, an incredible therapist. I'll put you in touch. And I says, thank you very much. Honestly, I really appreciate it. Very thoughtful, but honestly, I can't afford a therapist right now. It's part of the reason why I'm feeling so low. We're running out of money. She, so she says, well, just speak to her and see how you get on um, and take it from there. So I was like, right, okay, okay, fair enough. She wants to speak to me, that's fine. Now, after speaking to Megan, uh, I think I spoke to her on the phone initially. She invited me to come and see her in Kensington in London, which is where her office was. And when I went to see her, I went in feeling fucking terrible I felt lost I felt you know I was in a really really bad place a really bad place and I couldn't see a way out at that point honestly really couldn't see a way out and honestly after one meeting with Megan 
I came out and I felt like the weight of the world had been lifted off of my shoulders. Like I felt, I, I walked out, I remember walking out the office, walking around Kensington, which is a very posh part of London, all right, it's where the BBC studios were. So I walked past them and I felt like I could breathe. Like for the first time in a long time, I felt like I could breathe, which was, you, know, you might sound weird, but for me, it, that was a massive thing, a massive thing, all right. Now, in that time, Megan, we, sp uh, me and Megan have spoke a lot via text or phone call, via WhatsApp, and she's she's always just been there. I've, I've, and even now, she's still there. Even now, at any point in time, she always checks in on me. Um, she always sends me a message. And honestly, Megan is probably one of the best things that has ever happened to me in my life. Um, so I'm very grateful for her. But I digress. What Megan told me was, is amongst a million other things to help to help me try and get better was to listen to podcasts and at that point in time I was like oh, okay you know it's hard when someone gives you all this advice to, to try and make yourself feel better it is hard to digest and change your routine now when she told me to listen to podcasts you know I thought right okay I'll have a look I'll have a look so I seen that Tony Robbins had a podcast. Now Tony Robbins, for me, was someone who had made a massive impact previously. I know a lot of people don't like Tony Robbins, Ivana included. Um, he's got a very husky voice, for one. And there's some dubious allegations against him, but let's not go into that. Um, but for me, he is a fucking guru when it comes to everything. Life coach, positive attitude, you know, just everything. That guy's been through a lot and what he's overcome and endured and, and, and his attitude about life is just phenomenal. Uh, and the example of that was in his Netflix TV show, which is called I Am Not Your Guru. Now, if you've not seen this thing, please watch it. If you're looking for a Netflix recommendation, here it is. I Am Not Your Guru. It's incredible. It is almost life-changing. Basically, Tony Robbins gets like two and a half thousand people together Every year, I think it's like a five, six day conference somewhere in, somewhere in America and these people are willing to pay $5,000 each, all right, for this five, six day conference, which shows you how powerful and how much people believe in this guy. It's a mammoth seminar. They last like 12, 11 hours a day, 11 or 12 hours a day. Um, he's just like a motivational, life-changing speaker. And he's walked to the likes of like Barack Obama, Oprah, Princess Diana, Leonardo DiCaprio, and most recently Conor McGregor, who is also someone I take great inspiration from. Again, a dubious character. He's got some very uh, like uh, things hanging over his head. But again, for me, inspiration, the way they conduct themselves professionally and the things that they say and their manifestation and their positive mindset, that is the kind of things that I wanted to surround myself with. So Tony Robbins' podcast is something that I've been listening to almost every week since I had that conversation with Megan. Um, so I know the I know the value of a podcast now. I know how powerful words can be. Um, not just that, the, the emotion and the motivation behind the words. I know how, how, how powerful that can be. Um, so that's, that's a big reason, but... So again, I had a call with Megan this week and we discussed the difference in me as a person, my attitude, my outlook on life, the way I react to situations, uh, my mental health, my physical health, everything, just everything about my character. We analysed, we spoke about, and all of a sudden, I realised, thanks to Megan, how far I have come in a year. And I have no shame in telling you that at that point in time, at the end of the conversation, Megan went on to tell me about how proud she was of me and how far I had come in a year and I think I had been bottling up how far I had come. I, I think I'd tried to forget about where I was last year, how I felt last year and the things that I, were go I was going through last year. I think I'd been bottling it up up until that point and when Megan almost made me look in the mirror about who, who I was this time last year and how far I'd come, I, I burst into tears. I, she told me that she was proud of me and it, when she told me that, this was at the very end, I really had to stop myself from crying. We ended the conversation and as soon as I hung up the phone, 
I just burst into tears. I wasn't happy. I wasn't sad. I don't even know how to tell you how I felt. But I think I was just overcome with emotion in terms of, I think I was, maybe I was happy, maybe I was sad, maybe I was proud, maybe it was just everything. But at that point in time, I felt, I don't know, I just, I, 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 I sobbed uncontrollably for around, it must have been 10, 15 minutes. And I didn't know why. I didn't know why. But I have, I have come through so much. That that conversation with Megan just this week here in Bali, it just made me realise how far I have come mentally. I am a work in progress. Every single day, I am a work in progress. Um, and I will always continue to be a work in progress. But what Megan has done is given me the tools to be a better person, um, to re- recognise my triggers, to, to see things before they happen, to almost have like an outer body experience, to see things for what they are rather than what they appear. So starting this podcast this week, as I had that conversation with Megan and the, the realization about how far I've come, it just seems like the, the perfect time. And it's like the universe is saying, Jamie, this is your time now. Like you have endured, you've overcome and now your turn, as it's now your turn to help other people through the medium of your podcast, through the medium of your words, through the medium of your motivation and your experiences. So it was almost like a resurrection. Um, So that was a big deal. And again, I don't mind sharing that with you. I'm going to be very vocal about mental health and I believe that everyone should, especially men. Um, But again, we will talk about this in detail um, going forward. So there you go. That's, That's the main reasons why I decided to start a podcast. So let's get on to what I hope to achieve by having a podcast. Um, That leads me on nicely uh, from the the Megan thing. That was the dramatic point. Uh, So hopefully this camera, by the way, fucking keeps turning off. So as I was saying, that leads me on nicely about what I hope to achieve uh, by having this podcast. Now, I know that some of you listening, maybe vocally or internally, dealing with your own struggles mentally. And I want to make this an open platform uh, to discuss things, the deepest and the darkest, um, and things that might otherwise be taboo. I want you to feel like, you know, it's, it's okay. it is okay to not be okay. I know, again, it's very cliche. I hate cliches, but it, it genuinely is okay to not be okay. Um, I want to break the mental health stigma. Again, especially in men. I know too many guys that suffer in silence. I know too many guys... Um, that have taken their own life and again I'll share this with you I've lost my uncle to to suicide so again this podcast I hope if we discuss these things in detail and we discuss these things correctly we can help prevent other people suffering and suffering in silence Um, I want to normalise depression and anxiety because it is a normal thing especially in this day and age especially in this fast-paced, harsh, unforgiving world that we live in. Um, depression anxiety, and anxiety is a thing that we all must deal with at some point in our life. And I, but I just want to show that difficult times can be overcome with the right tools, with the right attitude, with the right people around you, with the right things around you, surrounding yourself with the right environment. If I can overcome it, and I can overcome it every day, then anyone can and I'm a big believer in that because I have been to the darkest places but I'm here now I'm here now I'm doing this so and I want to help other people um so that is that's a massive thing that I hope to achieve by having this podcast and I know that some of you might be struggling professionally whether it's in the digital world or any anything Uh, my principles my values my mindset and strategies these can all be applied to any industry um like wandering too has been to the brink of going and going out of business, pretty much. Like I think it was December twenty eighteen. Ivana and I had been trying with the blog, with the Instagram, all that kind of stuff. And we'd gotten nowhere. We'd kind of reached a brick wall and we'd run out of money and we were back home. It was winter in Scotland, which is fucking depressing, let me tell you that. So a combination of all the wrong things. Um 
so we were ready to decommission Wandering 2. We were ready to just give up and that was it. You know, go back and find work. And that was part of the, that was the point where I was really low. But at that point, I also checked the analytics for our, our blog, which up until that point we'd really treated as a travel diary. We never knew anything about SEO or optimization or anything along the or along those lines. So when I checked the analytics, our blog traffic had grown with little to no effort and little to no skill. And we decided in that moment, you know what? We're not gonna give up just yet. Let's give the blog a crack. We'll we'll switch our we'll switch our focus from the Instagram to the blog and we'll see what happens. And we gave ourselves six months and it was in that six months where I was seeing a therapist, Ivana was working um, contracts in London, we are trying to save money, we are working hard on the blog to revamp the old stuff, create new stuff. And we gave ourselves that six months to see what we can do. And it was in that six months that things really took off for us. Um, so again, in the business world, we have been at the brink and back. And we will continue again, I, everything that we do, we want them to, we've got a fire under our ass every single day every single day and there's no guarantee of success this is a very saturated world world the digital market um the blogging market the instagram market photographers even podcasts these days it's all saturated so it's very cutthroat um so we feel like we've got a lot of experience a lot of tools um and we know a lot of people as well who are in the business world um that we can bring in and give some good advice and some good value um and then we go into the relationship advice. Ivana and I, as I have said, have been to hell and back a million times over and we continue to survive. Um, Ivana and I are not a conventional couple. We are not the couple you see on Instagram where everything's fucking great every single day. You love each other dearly and you cuddle every night and everything's amazing and lovey-dovey-dovey. Ivana and I are not that. We are the opposite of that. Ivana and I are a work in progress all day, every day. Um... And we will always continue to be. So in terms of relationships, you know, we've got a lot to give um, in terms of advice and value. And again, even before that, I've been a dickhead in the past to previous partners. Um, I've been a party boy in my life. So yeah, I've experienced a lot of things. I've not been a good person. Um, I have been a good person at times and I've been taking the piss out of. So again, I've got a lot of experience when it comes to relationships and stuff. So I feel like, you know, we've got a lot to talk about. You know, if you're going if you're going through a few issues, I'm pretty sure I could give you a wee, a few good golden nuggets of advice um, on that. And ultimately, I want to bring humor and value. Life is hard. Of course, it can be hard, but it can also be fun. Uh, one thing the Scottish do well is see the humor in every single situation. There is no funnier race um, color or creed than the Scottish I, I, and I won't hear any I won't hear otherwise the Scottish are the funniest um, country in the whole wide world we know how to take the piss at ourselves and each other with upsetting other people um, we don't want this podcast I say we it's just me um, we don't I, I don't want this podcast to be generic and boring uh, you know I want to pr probe deeper but I also want to have fun doing it uh, keep it light hearted and you know have a lot of sarcasm tongue-in-cheek stuff, just have fun, you know, even when we're discussing the, the difficult subjects, I want to have fun. Now, our grand vision, when people come on the blog, well, I say our grand vision, this is the vision that I gave Ivana when it comes to the blog. When people come to a blog post, all right, I want it to be a full-on, fully immersive experience. I want them to get creative writing. I want them to have the best imagery I want, um, you know, professional visuals, which, you know, I'm, I'm getting better at the photography. Creative writing, we're getting better. So we've got, I think right now we've got the, the writing and the imagery down. But I also want video on there and I want a podcast. So basically, for example, I'll use the 10 best things in Changu again. So if someone searches the best things, sorry, I've got whiskey in my throat. If someone searches the 10 best things in Changu, and they come onto your blog post, you'll have the 10 best things written out. You'll get some lovely wee pictures that I'll have probably taken. You'll also have a video. Uh, we'll probably have to hire someone at that point because I can't be bothered making video. Again, I'm not that good. Maybe in future, listen, maybe in future I might get good at it, but in terms of it's just the time thing for me. So ideally in future, 
we'll have a videographer who'll also be there. So you'll come on, you'll get creative writing, you'll get the good images, you'll get the the video, and then you'll also have a podcast uh, discussing the 10 best things in Changu. I want to hit every sense when you come to a blog. All right? I don't know any other blog that does that, that hits every single sense on a blog post. Now, if you're listening to this and you've got a blog, don't you dare steal this idea, all right? Especially if you're a videographer, a good writer, a photographer, and you've got a podcast. Don't you dare steal this. That's my idea. I thought of that first, but that's a grand vision. And again, I'm, I'm, giving, you a lot of, I'm giving you a lot of private things here. If Anna says, Jamie, you need to stop telling people of this because they're going to copy us. And in the past, I have been very guilty of giving a lot of information and a lot of value for free. And people have went on to copy us. So, be, you know, if you go on and copy us, so be it, but you'll not do it as good as us. So that's, that's all it matters. Um... Yes, I want to bring on friends as guests to discuss their area of expertise. You know, I've got a lot of friends who are like photographers, fucking eco campaigners, vegans, you know, uh, mental health sufferers, friends with products and services, pretty much every walk of life. I know someone from every walk of life. So there's a lot of people I can bring on. We can have a discussion and we can also bring value at the same time. So going forward... It's not just going to be me talking in a microphone because trust me, as easy as I've made this look, it's quite difficult just sitting in a room talking to a microphone. Um, so it'd be nice to get other people to come in and we can bounce things off and we can get more value and pick their brains, you know, dig deeper, delve into, you know, their knowledge and understanding and things that they've experienced. So that's the plan. So that's it. That is it. How to start a podcast, why I'm starting a podcast and, uh, well, I hope, what I hope to achieve by having a podcast. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. And I hope you've got a rough idea of what I hope to achieve uh, going forward. Uh, go on, eat. Go, go easy on me. It's my first time. I'm uh, my podcast virgin no more. I've got my podcast wings. Um, I think the whiskey definitely helped. This is definitely going to be a staple of my podcast diet. Hopefully a nicer whiskey next time. Drum is okay, but it, it tastes like a, a mixture of beer and whiskey. Um, it's in that, that fermenting stage. You know, actually, a bit of whiskey knowledge here for you, just to finish off, that whiskey in Scotland, you can't call it a whiskey in Scotland unless it's over three years old. If it's under three, then it tastes like beer, because that, fundamentally that's exactly what it is. That's what drum tastes like, beer. It tastes like a beer whiskey. But it does the job. I feel like it's helped me with, with the podcast, so it's, it's done the job. Now, going forward... In terms of episode two, as I am recording this right now, I've got no idea what I'm going to do in terms of episode two. I've got millions of ideas and no ideas at the same time. So I really need to clear my head and think about who I can bring in or what I can talk about on my own um, for the next episode. So if if you're watching this or you're listening to this, please DM me and let me know who you think might be a good guest that I can actually bring on. You know, don't tell me, you know, like Barack Obama or something like that. Um, if you know anyone that's in Bali in particular that might be interested in coming on this podcast, then let me know. Or if you've got a subject that you would like me to cover in the podcast, then again, just let me know. Uh, I'm looking for ideas for episode two as of right now. Hopefully by Sunday when this airs, I'll have, I'll have locked something in. But we'll see what happens. That's all part of the fun of the podcast. You know, it's a very much roll with the punches. It's raw, it's real, it's relatable. And it's, you know, go with the flow. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully by, by Sunday, I'll have got someone in. I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has subscribed, commented, followed all my new channels. All you early adopters are the real MVPs. I know how stingy people can be with their follows and their subscribes and their numbers. You know, I'm not going to follow you because you're not going to follow me. And oh, I don't, I've, I already follow enough people on Instagram or, you know, I don't want to subscribe to your channel. And you, People are fucking stingy when it comes to all that shit. On, on social media so if you've if you're one of the people that have that have subscribed and liked and followed and all that kind of stuff well done you well done you and if you haven't give yourself a fucking shake and subscribe to my channel right now or follow my instagram or whatever just do something engage with me let me know you're there all right don't just listen to this and, and bugger off all right um so yes i think i'll go and have a few drinks now and celebrate my first ever podcast episode uh, I'm probably going to edit this one tomorrow with a sore head. I don't actually get hangovers, but this drum whiskey, because it's potent and it's not actually a whiskey or a beer, it, it usually does do things to me. Um, so we'll see how I feel tomorrow, but I'll, I'll get this edited tomorrow. But yeah, I'm going to go and celebrate now. It's Thursday night here in Bali. 
that usually means that pretty poison's on. Uh, it's pissing the rain outside, so we'll see see what happens with that. But yeah, you've got to celebrate these things in life, these small achievements. Uh, so that is what I'm going to do. So there you go. This has been Jamie's Wee Podcast with big personalities and subjects with a wee bit of Scottish humour. That's going to be my tagline, by the way. So I'll probably uh, end every podcast with that. I hope you like it. Um, but yes, thank you for joining me and I will see you later. I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.